name of Jesus. Somebody give God a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Praise him because somebody is being healed right now. Right now. Somebody is being delivered. Right now. Cancer is drying up now. Right now. Somebody praise him. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can shake it now. You can shake yourself now. You can get up out of that hospital bed now. You can get up out of the wheelchair now. God told me to tell you, he just healed your body. Somebody come on, praise it. Come on, praise it. Come on, saints, I feel it. Cancer can't stay. Tumors can't stay. HIV cannot stay. AIDS, I rebuke you now. HIV, I rebuke you now. Cancer, I rebuke you now. Come on, somebody praise him. Water on the brain, I call you out. Take your hands off of that baby. I decree healing. Healing. Your baby shall not die. He shall not die.
we got to go. Pastor Kreider, we got to go. Because somebody in television land that messed me up. Somebody in television land stop pulling on this healing. Somebody in television land said this ain't no program. This is my lifeline. Somebody in television land was about to commit suicide. Somebody in television land on the old shot had a bad report. But I came tonight to tell you whose report will you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. Somebody shout. Somebody praise. Oh. Oh, my, my. Oh. Y'all, we gotta go. We gotta go. Thank you, Jesus. I said I wasn't going to act like that this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But all I need is 10 people in this audience that said I came in here one way, but I'm going out with the victor. I'm going out with the victor. I'm going out. glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small. And if you can just forget about your neighbor, if you're standing next to somebody tonight that's all stiff and starchy and want to be cute, you just better pre-warn them. Tell them I'm an emergency case. I, I don't know why you came tonight, but I didn't come for no games. I came because I need a word from the Lord. Oh, yes. We get him ready to go, honey. He going to do it for you right there. That girl with her hand up, with that blue on, with the fringes. He gonna do it for you tonight, honey. Yes, yes, yes. Sister Valerie is coming, and we going into his presence, and we get ready to help somebody else that's in television land touch God. Because I believe right now there's somebody in television land that need this worship to penetrate their house. There's somebody that's in prison that need this worship to penetrate their spirit. Who am I talking to tonight? There's somebody that's in a hospital room that the doctors have given them up. But we know that when the Spirit of the Lord comes in the room, that, oh my God, whatever it is the doctor said, whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. So everybody in here, Sister Valerie, come. I want you to get your hands up and just begin to praise him as the woman of God come and take us in the worship because we all going to worship. All the guests going to worship. I'm going to worship. Nobody's going to sit down. We all going to give God the glory because he's due the praise. Oh, come on. Come he's on, Sister worthy. Valerie. He's worthy. Yeah, yeah.
praise God. Come on, everybody. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Lift up your hands on tonight. Oh, praise God. He's done so many wonderful things. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, saints. Praise. Lift up your hands.
that sister in the back of me tonight. Lord, you know.
some awesome hey, hey 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus to do right. Dr. Lyles, I'm trying to do right. Maybe that's what took him so long to ask me to host, but I'm just trying to do right. But when I feel the presence of the Lord, I'm trying to be If we don't stop, we ain't gonna get not not a interview done, nothing. But 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 Sister Valerie done stirred us up. That now I'm gonna tell y'all, that's the kind of church we have at home. Sister Valerie is our praise and worship leader from my church, and we have stinking church like that all the time. But I'm telling you the glory, and I believe that's what that's what TBN is all about. That's, that's what it's all about. It's about letting God have his way. It's about allowing people to praise the Lord until they get a breakthrough. Because yes. yes. something happens when you praise the Lord. Oh something breaks oh when you praise the Lord. Oh Miracles happen when you praise the Lord. What the enemy thought he was going to do, he cannot do it when you praise the Lord. My, 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 my. Well, well, we're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. My God. That's giving God the praise. Yes. I'm so happy tonight that you have joined us out there in television land, and I'm telling you, we have in store tonight for you some kind of program. God has divinely handpicked the people that are going to be on the program tonight because he wants to encourage you. And I know that there's some people that are watching tonight and you think that your situation is hopeless, but I came to tell you that the devil is a liar. It isn't. Yes, I came tonight invited by TBN to have you to understand that there is nothing too hard for God. God can do the impossible, and that's what makes him God. It makes him God when he is told that a door is shut, and he walks through a shut door. And so many times we get discouraged in thinking that our circumstances and our situations are, are created and governed by the devil, but I'm telling you something, that no weapon that's formed against you are going to prosper. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Dr. Lyles, I'm trying to hold myself down, so... You know, I just... I even wore my cute clothes tonight because I said I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna get real ugly tonight, but I'm about to get ugly in this uh, suit I got on. Don't start. Because when I start... Don't start. Because when I just think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out.
Well, tonight's program, the Lord has led me to give tonight's program a theme. And if you're watching tonight, and you know anybody that's got a problem that they don't think God can solve, tonight's theme is Faith in God. And the subtitle for tonight's theme is God Can Do Anything But Fail. That's right. I'm, I'm looking at somebody right now in television land, and I'm here to tell you that God can do anything but fail, and your best days are yet to come. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. I believe I got a witness out there. What the devil meant for your heart, God. And you know, Dr. Lyles, I'm not, I'm not just saying this because it sounds yes. good. I know people say stuff like that because it sounds good, audience. I know a lot of times you hear people say that and it sounds good, but I'm not saying it because it sounds good. I'm saying it because I feel that as a prophetic word in my spirit that tonight God is turning it around. I feel that. look in that camera one more time and say it one more time and I don't care what you're going through if you can just receive that prophetic word out of my spirit tonight that God is turning it around right now to help me tonight welcome who I believe to be tonight in television land, tonight in the audience, I want you to help me to welcome tonight one of the persons whom I believe to be one of the most awesome women of God in this country. And many of you may not know her. You may not have ever heard of her before. But uh, the person that I'm about to introduce to you in the person of Dr. Lyles is an individual that I believe that the Lord has had on the backside of the desert for such a time as this. I believe she's been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. And I'm not saying it because she's just a TV and guest. I'm saying it because I have had a personal experience uh, with her ministry and what God has used her to even do in my life. And tonight, you know, when I, when I was told that I was going to host this show, I would not even think about it, doing it, without having Dr. Lau. So I want everybody in television land and in the audience to please welcome with me, Dr. Diana Lau. Yes, you. God bless you. God yes. God yes. God bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well. God bless you. Dr. Lau, the first time I think that I had an opportunity um, to uh, experience your ministry, we were at Bethel at our church. Yes. And um, you were scheduled to minister that night. I had never heard of you before. That's right. And that night, uh, we had some complications. The bus got lost, yes. all of that. Oh, yes. And uh, by the time you got there, I think it was about 10 minutes to 10, and, yes. you, and you said, you know, well, I, I don't even know if, if, if we should come in, and, and the church was still waiting, and we said, well, the bus got lost. We want you to come in. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling y'all, in about 10 minutes, this woman blew the, I mean, God just, fell in the place. And from that time, uh, several years ago, I knew uh, in hearing you and hearing, and, and not just the scripture, but the depth uh, of God that was coming out of you is what always attracts me to people. Um, I'm not attracted because people can quote scriptures because, you know, the devil can quote scriptures and demons speak in tongues and tremble. But I always ask God to make me sensitive to the depth and the weight that people carry in the spirit. You know, are they walking with something heavy? And when I heard your ministry, I knew that there had to be a testimony behind what I was hearing and what I was seeing. And when I heard your testimony, I knew that you were the person that God wanted to uh, uh, just express that testimony to the people in television land because people need hope. So um, I want to begin with your ministry 
and um, before your testimony came, I want you to tell us a little bit about, you know, how your ministry uh, started and, and, and where, where it ended up before you went through uh, your, your, your time with the Lord. I began preaching prophetess when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Called to the ministry under a dynamic pastor at 14 years old, but she made me sit under her tutelage mm -hmm. for three years and learn about the things of God, mm -hmm. to learn how to serve rather than just grabbing a Bible and preaching. Mm -hmm. Then after, oh, I'd say about the age of 19, when I went away to college and on campus, it dawned on me that I did not know God. Wow. All of those years preaching, teaching, raising people to emotional hysteria, but I did not know God. Wow. I knew how to look holy. I knew how to act holy, but I did not know God. And as long as I was at home, with mama and with grandmother and my pastor, there were people there saying to me, you can't do this and you shouldn't do this and you can't go there. But when I went away to college, there was nobody standing over me to tell me what I can and cannot do. So I fell into sin because there was no power of God in my life. My God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. had the gifts, but no power. Now, when you say that, when you say, when you say you had the gifts, but, but no power, leading up to uh, uh, the time before you had your experience, what spiritually, and, and, and I really wanted to ask you this, and I, I've wanted to ask you this for some time, what was it that uh, you began to feel uh, when, you, when you found relationship? Because this is the point that I really want people to understand, that, that you can have a relationship with the Lord, you can, you can, you can have a, a time with God where you walk with God, you experience God, and then circumstances can cause you to begin to uh, back away from uh, the passion toward the Lord. Yes. And I want you to talk about, because I know from, from college, and then you, you, you gaining an experience you know, from the yes. Lord, something happened to you after that experience oh, in yes. your adult life. Tell, tell me about that, tell, tell us about that. I must say that once in my adult life, the, the experience of going to college, mm -hmm. and the experience of really knowing God, mm -hmm. I also felt the pressure of having to please the people in the church. Okay. This, this is where what happened to me. This is what really made me back away. And understand, I am in no way bashing the church mm -hmm. because a lot of what I went through, it was self-inflicted. Okay because I went to church and developed relationships in church with and for the wrong reasons. I went to church to become a member and it was more like a club thing. Well, we had this, this set over here that liked these set of people and this set over here like this set. So when I was in church, my focus for God was not there. But my endeavor or my longing to be accepted by people was my passion. Now, let me ask you something. So when did you get this on you that, that's, that's on you now? What, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I mean, can't y'all feel something on this woman? It's like, you, you know she packing something, and, and that doesn't come just from, you know, oh, Lord, I love you, oh, Lord, I thank you, oh, Lord, I just give you praise. No, that's fire right there. That, that, that right now is a tribulation. 
you know, you can always say when people done been through a little something, something, and when folk done been through the fire. Tell, tell us yes. that testimony. Yes. What, what happened to you? I think you were, you were, you were, you were working for a company, and yes. go ahead. Getting ready to tell it. <laughs> Before that part, mm -hmm. I was, and I, I pray that you will allow me to be honest, while in the church, I became an alcoholic, I became a crackhead. I became a heroin addict. And I was a prostitute. In the church. Trying to cover what I really felt on the inside. If I must say, it was a mask that I wore because I had a face for the church people. But inside me, there was this thing. And then to top it all, people of God, when I was in the church, there was a problem in my family concerning situations with my children or my child, and I worked for a lawyer. Now, I'm on public TV, so I don't, I don't really have anything to hide. That's right. I worked for a lawyer who loved me and gave me a chance of a lifetime. Nothing promiscuous about the love. He just loved me, gave me a chance to work in a law firm. My passion was wanting to be a lawyer, and since I wasn't a lawyer, I became a paralegal and a legal secretary. This man allowed me to work for him, and because of the embarrassment of what I was going through. And that thing was, I embezzled $23,000 from a man who trusted me. Because singing about learning how to trust in Jesus, telling other folk how to have faith in God and have confidence in him, when it hit me, God help me tonight, when it hit me, yes. I did not have enough confidence in God to trust him to bring me out. So I took matters in my own hand, but this is the, 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 the victory of the testimony, Prophet is by them. When, when I went to court, and see, in my little town in Atlantic City, they, they, they have a, a thing about them where if you ever make a mistake, they don't give you a chance to get it together. They don't restore such a one ah. in the spirit of meekness. So after all of that, and I went to court, the folk were passing around the, the newspaper articles. They were calling folk and telling them what I had done and what I had been through. And, and, and people liked it because the devil had already said she'd never be anything. Yes, yes, yes. The devil had already said, ain't nothing to her. She can preach, but ain't nothing to her. She sounds good, but there's nothing to her. So let me tell you about my God. When I went to court, and I was standing there before the judge, and the judge looked at me, and I watched people before that going off before me. The judge was having a bad day, I suppose, and the people before me, he was carting them out. The bailiff was taking them out by the side, and he was giving them 30 days, 60 days, a year, 18 months. And when it came to me, when they called my name, and I stood there, and I was so afraid. I'd already packed my, my little toothbrush, and I already packed my little underwear, because I just knew I was going off to jail. But when I stood there in the courtroom, thank you, Jesus, and the judge looked at me, and he said, Mrs. Lyles, how do you want to serve your time? Uh. And I said to him, do I have a choice? He said, yes. He said, you can do weekends or you can do all the days. So when he began to read off what I had done and began to talk about my sentence, he said, five years suspended. days and he said you can do them on 
weekends. And understand this, I did not go to jail that day. I went home, he said, go home and put your affairs in order. I went home and he said, report back here next Friday night at six o'clock. And you know, he said, if you don't come back, there will be a bench warrant for your arrest. Well, you got to know that that next Friday night, I was there. When I went to jail, what should have been 30 days turned into 12 days. But while I was in jail, and the church folk were talking, church folk were judging, God let me have jailhouse rock in the Atlantic County Courthouse. If you don't believe that God can deliver, I'm here to tell you that he's a way maker. Somebody lift your hand and give God praise. I'm sorry. My God, I thank you. Told me I got three minutes. What do I do? Can I feel this thing? Listen, can I tell y'all something? I just got to tell you something. Listen, excuse me. I got to tell you something. See, that's my testimony. And that's what I've been through. And if you're not, you will allow what you've been through to hinder where you're going. So let me understand. That's my testimony, and that's what I've been through. But God had to allow me to change. He had to allow me to not look back at what I've been through unless it's for a testimony. Because you can lose your focus if you keep dwelling on your past. My God, I thank you. I ain't got but two more minutes, but I want to tell you something. Paul already said it in the book of Philippians. He said the one thing that I do, my one aspiration, he says I'm forgetting which are behind and I'm pressing. Is there a pressure in the house of God? Somebody raise your hand and give God some praise. What I got? Am I finished? I got one minute to tell you all this. Listen, the Shunammite woman couldn't lose her focus. Let me tell you how that woman, how bad she was. That woman, baby died on her lap. And she went and took the baby and laid it up on the man of God's bed. She came back down and told her husband, give me one of your fastest horses and one of your youngest men. She said, I got to go see the man of God, Elisha. Oh my God. She never told her husband that the baby was dead. Cause sometimes when God is getting ready to bring you out, God thank you. You can't tell everybody. I don't care who it is. But one thing that stuck with me, the Bible said she told him, saddle up this ass. She said, drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding, except I bid you. Why did she say that? Because she knew that if she ever looked back, if she ever slowed down, somebody in here tonight, don't you slow down. Don't you look back. Don't you slow up. Because if you do, your circumstances are going to cause you to miss God. I got to sit down because I'm trying to be obedient, but I feel God up in this place. I feel God in this place. I feel God. 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 I just got to minister to one person. Lady, right there, up in the balcony with the black 
on and the scarf. Let me tell you what God says to you this night. He said, take your eyes off of people and the past because there's ministry bursting loose inside of you. He said, don't look back. 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 Jesus. Sister Valerie Jesus. is coming to minister us in song, and I'm here to tell you that God can do anything but fail. I'm here to tell you to have faith in God. I'm here to tell you tonight that tonight is your night. Dr. Lyles, Dr. Lyles, we are so blessed tonight to have you here, and I know without a shadow of a doubt somebody was blessed. Can we put our hands together and give God a praise for Dr. information is on the screen and just in case it's not up there this is victory presbyterian deliverance church pennsylvania and pacific avenue in atlantic city i'm telling you if you ever made the decision in prayer to invite dr Lows, you won't be the same because when people have been through what she's been through ain't nobody trying to play god amen somebody come on let's give god a praise for sister valerie as she comes I felt that the Lord prompted my spirit to, to make tonight's program be about faith in God and about God can do anything but fail because the people that are on the program tonight are people that's going to ignite you, they're going to excite you, they're going to charge your faith in God, they're going to help you to understand that God is not through working because he hasn't got to you yet. Come on, somebody, I feel that. You went through working. Mother, you felt that one, didn't you? Mother right there on the front, when I said that, she said, <laughs> that's right, he ain't got to my thing yet, so I know he ain't through working. But this young woman is not only a woman of God, someone that God is tremendously using uh, since the Lord has transformed her. She is my blood sister. She is, yes, this is, this is my blood sister. Yes. I'm excited tonight. I'm excited tonight. It's my blood sister, and I want you to help me to work. Now, don't cry all your makeup off. I got to teach you how to do this now. You can't just come on the first time just crying all your makeup off. <laughs> I would like for you to please welcome tonight my sister, Kathy Bynum. She's a year older than me. Well, Kathy, okay, because cause your <laughs> stuff is toe up. I mean, <laughs> Dottie, we would need a whole nother show, two hour show. <laughs> and we still wouldn't be through. But I want to, first of all, tell the people a little bit um, about you that we were all raised in the church, yeah. born and raised in the church. Um, you were filled with the Holy Ghost at a young age. Um, and um, as you got older, we, she attended um, uh, uh, Pastor Shambach's Bible College in Tyler, Texas. Um, she went to school. Um, she was really, really being provoked by the Lord to become an evangelist. Matter of fact, she sang on Pastor Shambach's uh, uh, praise team in the tents and all of that. And if you can believe that, uh, similar to Dr. Lau's testimony, but my sister, um, I always admired her. Matter of fact, when she went away to, to uh, Shambox College, you know, we was all from the Church of God in Christ. So, you know, we would used to, hey, ho, ho, you know. <laughs> and she came back and she was in the basement, you know, down there, you know, with all that other kind of music. She was like, oh, we bless you. I went to my mother, I said, okay, she done went off some <laughs> college and she all. <laughs> I said, because all that little stuff she and she was talking about, oh, na, 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 na. I said, okay, that, that's chanting and all that. <laughs> I said, she didn't, 
she didn't want off. I said, because I, I said, I'm going to tell you something, Mama. Something going on with Shambas Khan, because he don't even do stuff like that. She done got mixed up with some <laughs> kind of cult. And she be down there for hours on the cold basement floor. Oh, I love you, Lord. <laughs> I said, OK, she all right. <laughs> And she starts trying to tell me about worship. And in the midst of having a powerful anointing, a pa now you're talking about a healing anointing. My sister just, God has given that thing to her. And when we were talking um, uh, the other day, and my mind began to go back to her testimony, that this woman, after going through all of that, ended up in the streets on crack cocaine. Now, I want to ask you something. What did it feel like knowing that you were raised in the church? How did all of that happen? Because how did you go from such an extreme and then to such a bottom? Well, at first, I didn't, I didn't really know I was just out there. But in traveling and being out there, uh, I began to tell God, why? What is it? And I, the struggle was still in me. But I began to tell, say to God, Lord, why is it that I'm like this? But he let me know, just since I've been on this side of the fence, that it was because of relationship. I had lost relationship with God. Though I went through Bible college, I went through, uh, God has had really uh, birthed in me prayer where I can just get on my knees and just seek God and just really come in connection with him. I wasn't truly connected to him. Mm -hmm. I was going on, uh, on what I knew, what I had been taught, right. what I had been trained. And though God used me, he used me to set people free, but I was not being set free. I was not being healed in my mind. I was going through uh, rejection and the things that I was going through that I wouldn't release to my family, to my, you know, to the minister, where people would just go on and on and on. I would just say, so from that, the relationship part just kept going on and on and on. And through that bad relationship where I wasn't really connected with God, that relationship spilled out into the streets relationship. So I was looking for a relationship. Wow, wow, God, wow, wow. Th that, that's powerful. So when, so when you didn't have relationship with the Lord and there were things that you needed, when you turned to the streets, you were still looking for that that you needed from God. Exactly. And that was, was relationship. That relationship. And then I was like, I remember I was in a, in a crack house and it was really cold and the water was up to here. And the Spirit of God showed up in like a cloud and he said to me, this is it. You are searching for love beneath your means. He began to say that to me and I, I didn't understand what it meant by at that, that time. And I just kept saying, Lord, what do you mean? He said, because you're searching for a connection with human life and the connection is in the spirit realm. It's from when you was born, when you laid on the floor, when you began to seek me, when you began to cry out to me, when your parents began to intercede, when you was before you before your birth. That's the seek that you're seeking after. But you, the enemy have you thinking that it's in the flesh. And that's why I went through torment. I went through being raped 15 times. Wait, 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 I, wait, 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 wait. You, you went through being raped 15 times. There's something I got to, I, I, you, you got to tell these people. There was a man in Chicago during your time when you were out in the streets on crack. And I'm talking about my sister was skinny as a rail. She was sleeping in garbage. I mean, if you see her now, you wouldn't believe all of her hair had fell out. She just looked like a raggedy bum. And when I would cold, come to Chicago and sometimes I would see her and my brother would say, there go Kathy. And I said, where? He said, right there. I mean, just staggering, hadn't bathed in weeks. There was a man in Chicago during the time that you were on crack cocaine that had killed how many women? About 15, 20, 23. And he was a serial killer? He was a serial killer. Tell us about the night that man grabbed and you. And the man got, I was, I was walking, I, I was walking down the street and he said, you got a, you got a light. I said, yeah, and I peeled the light. And at that time, when you're addicted to something, it just draw you like a magnet. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I just want to hit this pipe. And I said, okay, so he said, step in the alley. Because one thing about it, when you're out there, you don't have no fear. Because all you want is the next hit. And no matter what you got to do to get it, it doesn't matter. So I went with him, and I can remember we was in a garage. And he held me for like eight hours. He stuck a pole in my eye. He stuck a pole in every part of my body that you can imagine. And I didn't think that I was going to make it out of there. And when he popped me, it was, it was unbelievable. It was like I really saw stars for the first time. But God kept saying to me, you going through this not for you, but for somebody else. 
So I begin to say, God, I know I'm going to make it out because every time that he twisted, he turned, it was for the next woman, for this show right here. Because God, and he began to say to me, I don't know why I can't kill you like I've killed the rest of them. And he put a barbed wire around my neck, and he said, if you move, it'll automatically cut your neck off. And I got a thing around my neck now. And I just began to stand there and begin to stare at him. And when he opened the door, my first reaction was to run. But God said, be still and know that I'm God. So when people tell you that God don't speak to you, he's married to the backsliders. He speaks to you when you're out there. When I thought I wasn't going to make it out, he began to tell me, you know what, I, I don't know what it is. And he got real nervous, and he said, I got to have a drink. So he, uh, he, by that time, my face was demolished. It was unbelievable. You couldn't even tell that it was me. And he had, he had took the pole, and all while he was telling me to go through the act, the pole was in my eye, and he just kept twisting it and twisting it. And I kept saying, Lord, am I going to see again? And he said, see me in the spirit. <laughs> he said, see me in the spirit. And when I begin to just look upon his face, and he just got telling me, you can pray all you want to, but God don't hear your prayers. And I begin to tell God, Lord, if you just get me out of here, I'll live for you. I begin to tell God, uh, get me out, Jesus. Uh, get me out, Jesus. Uh, get me out, Jesus. Uh. And when we begin to walk down the alley, he said, I'm going in the store. And when he got in the store, I began to try to make signs to the people that, you know, what he had done to me. And he just turned around and he looked at me and he took off running. And that just left me free. But when I went to the hospital, they said, you ain't gonna never be able to see out that eye again. We need to just take it out. My mother said, no, put it back in there. Because God said, if I shot it, I'm gonna see her. If I abide in him, in my word, I shot it, I'm gonna see her. Hey! I shot it, I'm gonna see her. And his word about in me that I can ask what I will, and he'll give it to me. So I went on my mother's face. Because understand this, I didn't have that faith to believe that I can see again. But tonight I can see 2020. I shot that I'm see. But understand this. I didn't stop right there. When I walked out of there, I just, you know what I told God? I said, God, you didn't kill me then, so I still got some ways to go. That's how the enemy had me. I was trapped in this thing. I'm telling you, uh, I lived in abandoned buildings. Uh, I used the bathroom like a dog where I had to squat down. And I took a board and laid on that to go to sleep at night with water up here. Why? Not because I had to, but because the enemy had trapped my mind, trapped my spirit, because I was searching uh, for love beneath my means. She kind of, no, 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 you know, as I begin to sit back there, I begin to tell God I thank you because recently I went back to where I used to be at. But as I rolled down the streets, I begin to tell God thank you because I remember when. I remember. Ooh, da, 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 da. I remember when I was freezing. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Wait, I remember. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold he on. He cut out of hold us. Hold I want to bring something out. No, now, no, 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 no. Some of you all are hearing my sister holler like that. But after, while she was out there and came from out, the doctors had diagnosed her with cancer of the throat. And the doctors took her voice box out. So she's hollering on a miracle right now. No, 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 no,
when I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me. I can't help but to thank him. When the doctors diagnosed me and I died on the table, I was in a rehab. And before I went for the surgery, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, tell your mama whatever they do, after it's over with, don't let them touch you. I didn't understand what he meant by that. But I told them. But see, what you don't understand is I died on the table and they gave me up. But my mother and my father, the praying people that they are, they stood there, hasha, na, 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 and they waited and waited on God. And all of a sudden, I coughed and a gush of blood came out. And I heard my mother say in a subtle voice, God did it again. <laughs> And my mother said, I got to tell her. I got to tell her. Son that I will see her. Now understand something. I still wasn't delivered. I still wasn't saved. But God said, I'm married to the backsliders. So he bringing me out for this hour right here. Son that I will see her. Then when they told me that you don't have a voice box, that we took it out. So they put a little tube down there. They sent me home and said, she going to have to be able to talk like this. But my mother was a faith walker. She took that olive oil and she poured it in that hole. And the next one I got up, that thing was out. And they told me, if she talks, she'll talk above a, not above a whisper. But when I got up the next morning, I've been talking ever since. <laughs> I see her. Then I went on out and I, I, went, I had an accident and I fit my car fell 60 feet in the ditch. And I had a punctured heart, the stern wheel column went through my heart. And they told me that I wasn't gonna never be able to talk above a whisper and I was gonna have to sit down and sleep sitting, sitting up. But that didn't happen. So I shut, no, 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 no. Today ain't nothing wrong with my heart. And you know what I said? If God, if you let me live through this, I still got another chance. And God kept giving me chance after chance after chance after chance. So I'm telling you mothers out here that's praying for your daughters and your sons, hold on, because God said restoration is on the way. Restoration is on the way. Tell them about the party. See, see. <laughs> hey, Y'all got to forgive us because we just loud in God. We... Thank you, Jesus. Tell, tell them about the party. Tell them about the party when I called you. Tell them about the party. We, you know, I, I, be, I begin to tell God I didn't want to be left out here. And I thank God for Prophetess Bynum, my sister. She called me, she called home and told my mother, God told me to give Kathy a party. And everybody was saying, give her a party. But I'm going to tell you something, that party changed my life. I'm telling you, they had the works. I'm talking about a big spray. For, if it was like it was for Prophetess Bynum. And they, then my mother told, she told my mother, go find her, because we don't want to be surprised, because we don't want to get there and have a party and don't be able to find her. So they found me, they brought me over to my brother's house. And I mean, it was a big party. She, I'll never forget, she bought me a three-piece suit. It was a pants, a skirt, and a little blazer. She said, now I'm buying you this, but you gotta go to church three times in that suit. I was getting set up then. But I'm gonna tell you something, that changed my life. And I'm telling you this because the parents, you parents out there that's wondering about your children, you said, I ain't gonna give them $10, I ain't gonna give them $5, I ain't gonna do that, cause they ain't gonna do that. That's God's money. And you better do what God tell you to do. Because if it wasn't for the party, I wouldn't be here today. That let me know all the time when I've been telling God, God, I want to be changed. God, don't let me die out here. That was God's confirmation to me that I ain't going to die out here. I'm going to live again. Because they ain't celebrating me dying. They celebrate me living. Shut the door.
Okay, Captain, let's sit down, because we don't want people to think we're crazy. We ain't trained. Shut up, let's sit down. Now, we just showing out, trying to tell these people. But they don't know we have loud church. Yeah. Because tonight's program is Faith in God. Hey! Let me tell you something. You better hold on to your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers. And you know what my mother used to do? She got a picture of me of what I used to look like. Yes! And every time I stepped in her room, she didn't know it, but I kept looking at that picture and seeing what I used to look like. And every time I looked at that picture, it reminded me of where I used to be. And I began to tell God, I want to be her again. No, 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 no. And I'm going to tell you something. When I was froze laying in an alleyway, where my ears had just peeled up, where it was just this part of my ear, and it was red, 5 o'clock in the morning, I was hooked to a radiator. My mother said, God woke her up, and she fell out of her bed, and she began to plead the blood of God over my life. Because I'm going to tell you something. When my auntie used to say, I'm going to send the blood out to Jesus, that was for real. Because they sniff you out. I was, I was laying there, didn't know where I was going to get no help from. I was froze till my body was swollen up. But it was because of her obedience. She got up and she began to pray. And God sent somebody to release me from that thing. And I'm telling you tonight, when God said, give, give up your place, get out your bed, you better do it. Because somebody's life is happening to you. When I began to sit back there, I told God I would take nothing for this life that I'll do it all over again if I had to do it just for this night right here. Because I'm going to tell you something. Every rape I went through, I went through for somebody out there. I went through for some woman that's sitting in here right now that's hiding under that rape, that's hiding under that hurt. But God said tonight, give it up. Give it up because I've restored you right now. Your whole business has been restored. God said, if your heart shut, that I will see her. I promise you if you lay it down tonight that the hurt and the pain and the rejection, because some of us are going through rejection in this place. We're going through hurt and pain, and that's what causes us to go out. When she said earlier to me, what is it? Because a lot of times we go through the emotions of how we feel, but we don't really understand the real meaning. And God wants us to give him a complete yes. God told me it's because of the relationship. The enemy ain't after your gift. He not after your money. He ain't after your home. He ain't after your husband. He after the relationship that you have with God. Oh. And when your relationship is gone, your finances is gone, because you can't be in relationship with nothing else. Everything about you is cut off if you don't have true relationship with God. No, oh, so I'm telling you tonight. Let me tell you. We think that relationship is just getting down and saying this, but God just wants a simple yes. Yes, God, I'll go. You know, you used to tell me, the people in, 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 in our church days, they didn't wear makeup, they didn't do this, and they didn't do that. That's why God moved. No, you know why God moved? Because it wasn't what they wore. It was because they was willing to sacrifice. If the preacher said, don't do it, they didn't question it. That's why God, I know, that's why I know that God wants somebody to say yes without a question. Let them lead you wherever you got to go. And that's why I'm telling God today, yes to your will, whatever it is, I tell God yes. Shine that up on see. People in God. Oh, no, 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 no. He cut the The song feet. that no, 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 Sister no, no. Valerie is about to do now Ooh. is, Oh, Lord, Get Me Out, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And before Sister Valerie go into that song, I want to finish her testimony by saying, you looking at a person that came from out of the streets. A couple of years ago, she built her first house from the ground. Praise the Lord. Completely furnished. She's been working. She's been working for my ministry. She's over the, 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 the bookstore department. And I want to testify that ever since she's taken over the bookstore department, God has blessed us in a way that he had never blessed that department before. And I want to encourage some parent out there, have faith in God. If you out there and you just heard that testimony, you need to cry the same cry, cry that my sister did. Oh, Lord, get me out, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, come on, come on, come on! How we know the Lord will get you out? Ah, oh, hey, hey! Come on and clap your hands! Come on! Come on and clap your hands! Turn around to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, my God can do anything! Anything! If you know it, shout it out! Oh, Lord. Give me up today. I'm tired, Lord. Give me up, Jesus. I'm tired. 
crying, Lord. Get me out today. Get me crying, Lord. Get me out, Jesus. Get me out. Get me out today. Yesterday is gone. Get me out, Jesus. Tomorrow may never come. Get me out today. I need you, Lord. Get me out, Jesus. Get me out. Get me out today. Just been fine. Get me out, Jesus. Can't get tired. Taking pills. Get me out today. You've been sued. Get me out, Jesus. You got a car no due. Get me out today. You're losing your house. Get me out, Jesus. Even your spouse. Get me out today. Your roof is leaking. Your basement is sinking. Get me out today. Your child's on crack. Get me out, Jesus. You're trying to pull them back. Get me out today. Your children are stealing. Get me out, hey. Jesus. And they're dealing. Came to stay. The roaches are running. The mosquitoes are coming. You out to get you out. He's a 
want to Lord have mercy y'all we just oh Jesus oh Lord Hallelujah. I just feel like a baby saint you know how you, you, when you first get saved you be like oh Jesus <laughs> you just trying to hold yourself but God has been so good to us and I just came tonight to encourage somebody that's watching tonight tonight is your night for the program because I'm telling you God can do anything but fail sister Valerie CD is in the stores now symphony of the heart you need to pick it up. You need to go out and get it. She's still going to end the uh, program with my favorite song, Oh Sweet Spirit, Fall on Me. And I'm telling you, it's going to bless your life. Symphony of the Heart. I love her ministry because she's real for God and she means Jesus every step of the way. Well, last but not least, they always say that good things and precious things come in small packages. This woman of God right here is nobody's joke at all. Darlene Bishop has been such a blessing to my life. She's been uh, just a jewel because when you hook up with somebody that believe God the way you believe God, then you got yourself a friend indeed. Darlene Bishop has come and blessed our conference that is coming up. And I want to say this, if you are uh, planning to attend uh, the Weapons of Power conference this year. I want to tell you, it was last year, Women Weapons of Power, but because this ministry, the ministry that God has given me, we follow the cloud by day and the fire by night because it's a moving tabernacle. We do what God tells us to do. And this year, the Lord has instructed me to take the word of women off and open it up because he said there is a move of God that is coming for the entire body of Christ, for those that he's calling to this hour. Amen. Amen. So we are, we have, we have taken women off and men are invited because the theme of the conference this year is it's time for revival. And if you are in a place where your spirit is dry, you need, the, I mean, the information is right there on the screen and you can get in contact with us, but it's going to be August the 6th through the 9th in St. Louis, Missouri. August the 6th through the 9th it's in St. Louis, Missouri. You need to be there. You need to pray because you know what? We're not asking for spectators. We're not looking for people that just said, oh, I just want to go to the conference because it ain't that kind of party. We're looking for people that are, that are willing to leave all of their lula clothes at home, all their foo foo stuff at home. We're looking for people that's willing to come with their jeans on and a t-shirt and get on their face before God and say, God, this is me. I'm dried up. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. My soul needs to be revived because it is time. If you don't think it's time, you look at what's happening in Iraq. If you don't think it's time, look around the world. The Bible said in the last days, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Men will be lovers of themselves. But I believe that God has a remnant that he's calling for this hour. No, everybody's not going to hear him because a lot of people are going to church, but everybody is not in God. And so if you're in this place, amen, amen. So if you're listening to this broadcast tonight and you saying that's where I need to be, I need God to do something in my spirit. I need a new shot. I need God to wake up something on the inside because, though, listen, though the sinners get saved during the hour of revival, when God prophetically calls for revival, it's to the saints. So apparently God is get, gathering up his remnant to get us ready to do this last day journey, to do this last day job, to uh, actually cause revival to break out everywhere we go. I'm telling you as a prophet of God that we don't have any more time for all the stuff that we're doing. We don't have any more time to be playing patty cake 
with God. We got to get ourselves in a place with God to where we can cry out to God and say, God, in my life, it's time for revival. So if you're not doing anything and you, you fasted and you're praying and you believe that this is a place that you ought to be, meet me in St. Louis, August the 6th through the 9th. Darlene is going to be there. And uh, she didn't know that. I just, I just said that because the Holy Ghost just said that. So I ain't even asked her. <laughs> But just then, he just, he just dropped that in my spirit. Darlene is going to be there. Dr. Lowes is going to be there. And, 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 and after that testimony, I, I don't know what happened if I don't say, and Kathy going to be there. <laughs> but it's going to be an awesome time in God. TBN, this woman is no stranger to, to, to some of you in television land a couple of weeks ago when I was recuperating from pneumonia. Been in the hospital nine days. Darlene came on television and, and just my little quick testimony. In the month of February, I was diagnosed with a severe case of pneumonia. I was in the hospital for nine days. I had bruised lungs. I had pulled a muscle in my chest from coughing. And the doctor said that it would be a long time before I could ever preach, shout, or anything like that. And I was laying in my bed and you came on TBN and you began to preach about trusting God and walking in faith. And I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord filled my bedroom. And I began to step out on faith and claim my healing and telling the devil, you a liar. And I want TBN to welcome once again back to the TBN Rock program, my friend, great woman of God, Darlene Bishop. Love you. This woman is awesome. Darlene. I just want to say this to you in front of everybody in television land as many times as... I know I'm your best white friend. <laughs> That's why she tells everybody I'm her best white friend. <laughs> because because everybody knows that Valerie Boyd is my, blessed, my best black friend, but she's my best friend in the whole wide world. When I met Darlene, I said, Darlene, I got to put you in there somewhere because you're just so sweet and I just love you. <laughs> I just, just don't want you to just to be a sister to the Lord, so I tell her, you're my best white friend. <laughs> but... And this woman has been a friend indeed. I mean, doing some of the in ministry. Darlene has called me and gave me the word of the Lord, and, and she just walked with me and walked through me and held my hand, and she was like a mama and all of that, but I appreciate it. So you know what? It, it just, it's, I'm, 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 I'm excited to have you here tonight, Darlene. Thank you. You came to our church doing the revival that we're having that started in January, and I think this is our ninth or tenth week, and we're still in revival. And people have been flying in from all over the country, and we are in an awesome move of God in our yes, church. Yes, you are. And we called you uh, on the spur of a moment, and you came. And I want to tell you this in front of everybody in television land, for real. Out of all the times I have ever heard you preach, I have never heard you preach the way you did at New Greater Bethel. And I said to you when we got upstairs, I said, Darlene, something has happened to you. I said, I I've known you. You've always had a good anointing on your life. You've always had an awesome testimony. Uh, and, and I said, but, and, and I want to say this because th there's a revelation that you almost shared with me upstairs, and I want you to get to it, so I'm going to say this. You know, th this woman is sitting here. God healed her from breast cancer. And so that, that's her testimony. But something that God is doing in your life now that is so awesome to me that I can see that there was another level that it dropped on you. Tell me what has happened to you since I seen you, because I'm telling you, I almost jumped on your back while you was preaching. I was like, what, where in the world had Darlene been? Well, I tell you, when you took off running that time, I thought, well, as she left, you know, I didn't know what had happened to you. <laughs> but for 16 weeks, Juanita, we have been preaching, well, actually 17 weeks now, I have been preaching on what is the prayer of faith. God poured this into my spirit at the end of November because we have so many people, so many saints that are attacked with cancer and heart trouble, and all kinds of diseases, and we're losing too many of them. Yes, yes, yes. And so I begin to ask God, what is the prayer of faith? Yes. And for 16 weeks, I have preached on one scripture for 16 weeks, Mark 11 and 23, and God has so put it in my spirit that I'm not the person that I used to be. I'm not the darling bishop that I was 16 weeks ago because wow. there, is, there is something in me that I have found through searching and going into the depths of God like I've never found before. And let me just drop this first of all because I'm so excited about this, I can't really contain myself. But I, on a f Saturday morning, I was in Tampa, Florida, and I was getting ready to do Paula White's Women's Conference. And I was to speak at 10 o'clock in the morning. I was, the Lord woke me up 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, 
And so I just laid there and I was meditating on the Lord and I'm so full of all that God has given me. I mean, I told our church, I said, uh, I began to minister our church and I said, from this scripture, you will have faith in your faith. Wow. Not just faith in men, not just in faith in certain people, but I want you to have faith in your faith because I believe that we're coming into a day and very shortly, maybe before this week's over, that we are not going to be able to call the people that we used to be able to call and say, come and pray for me. That's or right. I need you to pray for me. We've got to get faith for ourselves. But anyway, I was, I was uh, laying there meditating on the Lord and I, and, and I was just praising God. And I said, God, I'm getting ready. And you know how full I am of the Word. Yes. And, and I've, I'll have about 45 minutes to an hour to bring forth what I've got in me for 16 weeks. Yes. And I said, God, you've got to help me to get this message through to people to believe. Yes. I said, God, that's what I want to get them. I want to get your people to believe. And I said, God, how? How? Give me the word. Just give me the word. And if I've ever, in 44 years of being saved, in I've never heard anything like this before. God said to me, it was just like instantly. He said, Darlene, because I've been teaching our people about the power of our words. I don't think we've ever went to the depth of the power of death and life is in our tongue. Yes, yes. And so I've been teaching our people. You know, I've been teaching them that how much power is in what we say. So when God spoke to me, he said, Darlene, tell them to say. Mm. Mm. Because, now listen to this. Watch this. Watch this, Juanita. He said, tell them to say. Because remember, I asked him, I said, how can I get your people to believe? He said, tell them to say. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. Mm. Now, now, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. And so I thought, man, that describes a believer to a T. Because Emmanuel, God is with us. Because God is with me, I expect victory every time. And as I was meditating on that, I seen the word believe. And these words fell out of believe, and they spell believe. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. Oh, oh my God. Oh. oh, my God. Oh. In seven words, Juanita. <laughs> because Emmanuel well, lives, I expect, expect victory, victory every time. time. Believe. 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 That's it. In the ah. world, how could anybody say he described believe in seven words? If I would tell you to do it, you tell me to do it, it wouldn't be possible. But he said, and you know, it's so easy. Every, my daughter, immediately when I said that at church, she wrote a song while I was preaching the rest of my sermon. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every, every time. time. Every time. And that's what a believer is. It's not I expect it when I can see my way out, yes. when somebody can get me out, but I expect victory every time. every time. No matter what I'm going through, whether it's breast cancer, whether it's ca cancer of the colon, no matter what it is, heart attack, I expect victory every time. Darling, hallelujah. Now, I'm not smart enough to think that. I want y'all to know that. When you, when you began to preach, when you began to preach, and this, and this, 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 this hit me, I know that God has given you an anointing for this because when I, when I turned to the scripture, I was sitting on the side, on the, on the platform, and you, and, and you said, turn to Mark 11 chapter, and you know, and I, and I, I, I turned there, and you begin to read it. And when you begin to preach that night, ever since that night, this scripture had it like when you quoted it and you read it, it just went in the depth of my spirit and I have not been able to tear it out. And I don't care what has come my way since that night. I cannot, I cannot, it, whatever it is, it cannot abort what you said. And it reads like this. It said, truly I tell you, in the Amplified Bible, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. 
and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes. But believes. Hallelujah. <laughs> because Emmanuel lives, lives I expect victory, victory every, every time. time. <laughs> that, oh my God. That means, oh my God. That means when we, whenever we say to God that we believe, what you are saying to us tonight, that every time we say out of our mouth, Lord, I believe, we are proclaiming that we recognize that he lives, and because of that, we have victory every, every time. time. Exactly. <laughs> What I loved about it was so much was the fact that he used his name Emmanuel because oh God. God is with us. See, the reason that I feel like that so many times that, and I tell people that when situations come, so many times they're impossible situations. The only reason it's an impossible situation is if it was possible, God would not get any glory. But God has to put the people of God into impossible situations so he can get some glory out of our situation. So, see, that's the reason that we as saints of God have to go through so much, but when we realize because Emmanuel lives, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Then I expect victory. And see, that scripture, when, when Jesus said, have faith in God, then the 23rd verse is the law of faith. He's telling us how to have faith, that we speak to our mountain. See, what we do, we talk about our mountain. Ah. We talk and we say, you know, honey, I, the doctor said, or, or my, you know, I'm having problems in my marriage, or I'm, you know, I just don't know if I'm going to ever get out of debt. We talk about our mountain, but he said, speak to it, <laughs> and after you speak to it, then you tell it where to go. See, you have the authority to get rid of your mountain. Now, 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 wait. Now, this is, this is the most powerful part of this scripture that really blessed me. And you started shouting this, and I think I took off and ran around the church a couple of times. When you went, when it said, it said, believes that what he says yes. will take place. And this was the part that got me. It will be done for him, Ooh. which means you speak it. Yes. And when you speak it, you ain't got to do nothing, nothing else. Nothing, nothing. It will be, be done for you. Watch this. In the 24th verse, this is the kicker, okay? When he says, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Yes. The next verse in the, in the King James, it says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, wait a minute. Watch this. That word therefore means because of the preceding verse. In ah. other words, because of what he just said, he shall have whatsoever he says. The original Greek says, that is the reason I say pray your desire. Because he said the reason that you've got to pray your desire is because whatever comes out of your mouth is what you're going to have if you believe it, see? So we've got to everything that we say. To see, that's the reason. I was telling them the other night, I said, you know the problem with a lot of people, a lot of the saints, and you know, I, I didn't realize that we got a lot of, a lot of cussing saints. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, we got a lot of cussing preachers. And, and so, and, and you know, and the Bible says that, you know, blessing and cursing can't come out of the same fountain. Come on, darling. And the reason that our life is in such a mess because the Word of God said that God created His world when He spoke this world into existence with His words, not a hammer, not a nail, but He spoke it. And He said, the power that I have, I'm leaving it with you. So He's saying, I spoke my world into existence. I give you the power to speak your world into existence. And if your world is messed up, baby, it's because you need to see what you've been saying. What you need to realize is that when, when the enemy, and you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, that's not really cursing. But you realize that when, when you damn your house and you damn your husband and you damn your children and you damn your car and you, you damn your boss and your job, and, and that word means it's doomed. 
See that come out of your mouth and you got to get what you say. So that's the reason that you're living in a damned world because it's come out of your mouth. wait till April the 4th. I'm going to be back here and I'm going to preach the rest of this. I'm going to preach while I preach for 16 weeks on April the 4th so you listen. <laughs> how, how many minutes we got? How, how, Mr. Producer, how many minutes we got? He's he looking all off somewhere. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right quick, Darlene. Uh, Dr. Lyles, come. D Dr. Lyles, Kathy, come, come back up here. Uh, Sister Valerie, come on. Um, now, that little pin that's on your shirt right there, uh, uh, Darlene, please bring some of those when you come back in, in two weeks to, to, uh, to, to do TBN. Okay. Darlene wear this little pin that looked like a sheriff, and, 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 and God had given her revelation everywhere Sister Valerie has on one. Mine was on my blue jean jacket, and I forgot it. But the Lord uh, began to deal with her about about when, 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 a, when a sheriff is in town, and he, he, he governs the law, and when, when everything gets out of hand, he has to take some everyday common people and deputize them and give them the same power and authority that he has. And God gave her that. And that night at the church, she just began to throw those pins out into the audience. And, 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 and I got one. And I'm telling you, Darlene, there's something to that. Exactly. There's something to that. And ever since I got that pin and pinned it on, Sister Valerie wears hers, it, it, it actually tells the devil that, that you may not recognize who I am. I may look like a common, everyday person. Exactly. But I've been deputized by the power of God, and I have the same authority. I have the same authority God. that God has, which means I can speak as God speaks. Yeah. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You didn't hear that. Hallelujah. That means I can speak those things with be not as though they were, and they've got to come into existence. Because the Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Do y'all understand what the word says tonight? He said, we are going to have, after this night, after this night, in this audience, I touch and agree with Darlene. Yes. And I'm deputizing every person in this building. You right there in television land, I'm deputizing you. Oh, come on, somebody. You right there in television land, lift your right hand up right now. Like they do. You lift, that's right, I'm getting ready to spiritually swear you in. I'm deputizing you. From tonight on, I decree it to be so. That the thing that you decree it shall come to pass. I'm deputizing you. I'm telling you right now that I'm releasing and anointing the Holy Ghost to come on the inside of your spirit. I command you to speak power. I command you to speak life. I command that your life is going to take off and you're going to be more than a conqueror. tonight. That means you got power to stop the enemy. Come on here somebody. You better give God this next praise that you're about to give God. It's the kind of praise that tells the devil, whatever you thought you was going to do, it didn't work. You don't hear what I'm saying? And whatever you plan to do, that ain't going to work. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. I wish I had somebody to go to praising God right there. Because see, what's it? We get ready. We get ready to leave the broadcast today. Oh my God! Because when the anointing comes on you, that's why God brought some of you in here tonight. He didn't bring you in here for a program. He brought you in here for your circumstance. He brought you in here to let you know that He's deputizing you tonight. That means you're no longer the pitiful one. You're no longer the one that's in trouble. You understand that what you're going through, you on your way to power. Huh? Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, I'm on my way to power. I'm on my way to power. Oh, you're not saying that like you believe it. So watch this. Darlene, they just, we just went from being an audience right. to a posse. To a posse. Yeah. 
Y'all know what a posse is? We just went from being an audience to a posse. We just went from being the people that the enemy is chasing to the people that's chasing the enemy. Come on, somebody. Now for the next, for the next, for the next 30 seconds, I just feel the anointing on this. I want you to begin right where you are, to begin to turn your life around, begin to turn your family around. I hear the Holy Ghost said, for the next 30 seconds, stop praying something else out of your mouth. Begin to pray the victory in your house. Begin to pray the victory over your kids. Begin to pray the victory over your finances. Oh, come over here. Be right there in television land. Begin to speak something else because God said you shall have whatsoever you say. So you got to turn it around with your mouth. You got to begin to pray something else. Come on for the next 30 seconds. Begin to decree a thing. Begin to decree it. Yes, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sweet spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Come on, come on. Remember, you shall have yeah, yeah, yeah. whatsoever you say. Come on, somebody give him a praise. I feel that. You yeah. shall have whatsoever you say. Yes, God. All of us right now, for a few minutes, join hands. Join hands. Join hands. One minute, Sister Valerie. Hold on one minute. Join hands. Join hands. Come on. Come up here. Get across that. Join hands with somebody all over this building. We get ready to go in prayer because we've been deputized. We get ready to pray for our country. We get ready to pray for the president. When I looked on the television last night and I saw his face, I can see the stress on him. I can see that nobody in this room, and I want to say this to people in television land, I want to say this to Christians, get your mouth off of the president. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't just hear what I just said. Because the stuff that you speak out of your mouth would damn our country. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Oh, that old Bush don't know what he's doing. Oh, what he doing? He ought to, oh, he in a mess now. No, we're the believers. And God has commanded that we pray for the president. He's commanded that we pray for our country. And our country is in trouble not because of the president. Our country is in trouble not because of the White House. It's in trouble because we were a people that trusted in God. And when we turned our back on God, we gave Satan permission to take over our country. And now if we want our country back, we got to turn back to God. Because the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll do what I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. And I don't know about you, but our land is about to be healed. So we join in hands tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for President Bush right now. Father, I ask that you let your anointing come down upon the men. God, I'm asking, Lord, that you let your spirit come down on the man of God. We ask in God that you encamp angels around him, God. That you build him up where he's torn down. That you give him peace of mind. That you let your anointing penetrate him, God. So that he'll know what the next move is to keep us on schedule for your divine coming. For God, we know that nothing will last forever. But God, we want the world to stay on your schedule. And so, God, we pray for the cabinet. We pray for the legislature. Later. God, we pray for the entire White House. We pray for Condoleezza Rice, God. We pray for, for, for Colin Powell, God. Give them direction, God. Don't let them get in their flesh, God. Take over, God, in the name of Jesus. God, pray, God. I pray for our troops. I pray for every mother's son. I pray for every husband. I pray for every woman, every man that's laying out in war, not knowing whether or not they're going to come back alive. God, I plead the blood right now. God, I ask for your divine protection. God, I ask that you cover them like they were before. God, I even ask as a prophet that you bring this war to an end. God, I don't want it to start, but we say let your will be done. But God, we decree that if it's done, God, and if there is war, that it'll be a short-lived war, that it'll end as quick as it started, and there will be no casualties. In the name of Jesus, God, I even pray for Sadan. I pray that he would find you, Lord. I pray for his family, God. I pray that they would be set free. I pray, God, that they would 
oh, erase religion, God, and find you. I pray, God, that somebody will call him up and introduce him to Jesus. And we thank you for his soul. We thank you for the souls of the Iranians. We thank you, God, for deliverance. And God, everybody that's listening tonight, we speak a divine protection. We speak divine healing. We speak it in Jesus' name. And God, we thank you for the victory because we know tonight that as long as Emmanuel lives, I can expect victory every time. Somebody come on and give God a praise. Oh, sweet spirit. Oh, he's here tonight. If you're watching tonight, join me. Join me August the 6th through the 9th in St. Louis. God's going to move because why? It's time for revival. The information is on the screen. Or call that ministry because God is doing something awesome. It's the Weapons of Power 2003. It's time for revival. Come on, everybody, turn around to three people and say, it's time for revival. Oh, come on, come on. Like the cool to their Yes, drop. come on, turn around and tell three people. From yes. the morning leaves. Come on, everybody sing it, everybody. Let your anointing. Come on, saturate me, lift saturate your hands. Saturate me, Lord. Yes. Oh, sweet spirit. Come on, everybody. I need you to fall on yes. me. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. sweet spirit. Come on, everybody, lift your hands up. Glad you've been here. One more thing. Let me say this. Listen. All you got to do is wait on the Lord. Anybody waiting on the Lord? Just be of good courage. All you've got to do, all you have to do is wait. I say on the Lord. That's what David said. He's an old. My, 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 my. 